Fisher, it's time we talked about the Ark. What is it? What Nicolades wants most in the world, and what we're going to catch him by. That's all we know. We know the Ark is hidden somewhere inside the Georgian Presidential Palace, and we know Varlam Kristavi is letting him take it. Who's Kristavi? The new president of Georgia, pushed into power by our friends at the CIA. It doesn't make sense. We'll do the thinking. Your primary mission in Georgia will be Nicolades. We get him and the game's over. The good guys win. Were you talking to Lambert? Yeah. I'll soon before we touch down in Georgia. We don't. You'll be making a halo jump. Good. Dad, is that you? Sarah, it's good to hear your voice. Are you coming home? The TV said you guys beat Nicolas. It's not that simple. So you're not coming home? No, honey, not yet. But soon. A collective sigh of relief as the U.S. returned to a state of amicable diplomacy with China. The swift action of the CIA and Chinese intelligence revealed a splinter faction of the Chinese military covertly supporting the Georgian information crisis, declaring a national day of mourning for those lost in the Georgian information crisis. Confirms the consummate defeat of Kambayn Nikolaz's cyber warriors. The acts of information terrorism have come to an end. And in a ceremony later today, President Bowers will be issuing an official thanks to the CIA, FBI, and U.S. Special Forces for their role in bringing an end to the crisis. Though his whereabouts are still unknown, Combain Nicolades is essentially powerless. We have torn off the scorpion's claws. We have severed his tail. And he cannot stay hidden for long. Find Combain Nicolades and the Ark. Kambe Nikolaj has returned to the Georgian Presidential Palace in order to retrieve a weapon known only as the Ark. The great risk involved in Nikolaj's personal return to Tbilisi suggests its enormous value. Any threat posed by Nikolaj or the Ark must be dealt with. Welcome back to Georgia, Fisher. Our cleanest path to the Ark is President Kristavi's records. Details on your OPSEC. What if Kristavi gets in my way? Don't touch him. He's copacetic with the CIA. If Kristavi dies, the mission's over. Hey everybody, it's Cotton here, and I am bringing you some more of my full stealth playthrough of Splinter Cell. In the last episode, we finished up our second visit to the Chinese Embassy. We destroyed the trucks that were carrying the nuclear weapons, and we found Feirong. And in this episode, we are back in Georgia, and we are here to find Nicolades. Now, right at the beginning here is nothing much it's just uh, actually getting inside the compound and doing that involves a lot of uh, climbing and jumping around on these pipes and ledges so there's really nothing too exciting that happens right at the beginning here uh, it's pretty much just a straightforward path there's no alternate routes or anything it's just one way for you to go And I thought it was interesting that, um, you know, this game has this because it's very similar to another older Ubisoft franchise, uh, Prince of Persia. Yeah, I remember that game. That, that feels like it was quite a while ago, but yeah, it was still around the same time as Splinter Cell. It was actually released one year after Splinter Cell. But I think it's funny how now, at, you know, this current time in 2013 uh, Assassin's Creed is after I was interrupted there but uh, what I was saying is that how Assassin's Creed is now the big Ubisoft franchise and a lot of its gameplay is being incorporated into the current Splinter Cell that's being released this year uh, Blacklist so I just thought that was kind of interesting some of the similarities between these uh, Ubisoft games and their big franchises Abtandil, why don't you clean up after your dog who is that? Get that damn spotlight out of my eyes, you filthy sniper! Eftendil, Bandri, keep the chit chat off the airwaves! Yes, sir! Sorry, sir. Alright, so... Uh, 
yeah, after you do all of that, you uh, are here at the compound or the courtyard, wherever, who cares. Uh, but if you'll no- uh-oh. Oh, man, I almost thought that was going to see me. Uh, on the other side of this uh, guardrail here, you're pretty much safe from the spotlight, except where that moss or vines are. That's pretty much the only area where the spotlight will appear. So you only have to worry about the spotlight when you're on this side, just when you're uh, getting up from the pipe. Uh, but right here, uh, in this area directly in front of me, are two guards and two dogs. So, uh, that is the most annoying part of this level. And it's the only part where you'll find dogs uh, for the rest of the game, because yes, this is the last mission of the entire game. We are very, very, very close to the end. And uh, very close to wrapping up this whole thing. Um... But yeah, I like to hang off the ledge here just to be safe. I'm not really sure if you can be seen or if the dog will uh, bark at you if you're standing up. So I just hang off the ledge just to be extra careful. Uh, but this guy and the other guy here and the guy that is... Whoop, and the other guy that is inside that uh, maze area, all three of them have satchels. And... All three of those satchels contain the exact same thing. So, if you take out one guy, you have the exact same satchel and data stick that the other two guys are carrying. So, if you take out all three of these guys, when you grab the other two satchels, you won't get anything from them because they contain the exact same information as uh, the first satchel. And we will have to knock out one of these guys for their satchels because it contains a key code to a gate that we have to get past. I'm not going to knock out these two guys. I'm going to knock out a guy that is in the uh, mage, uh, maze uh, hedge area. So what I need to do here is just wait for, you know, the opportune moment. I need both of these guys away from me and I also need that spotlight to uh, be far away as well and I'm cutting it really close there uh, but yeah that's what you need to do just wait for your time to be in darkness and behind them but once you get here you have to be pretty quick because those dogs will catch on to your scent and so you need to move really fast to make sure that you finish this part up before the dogs and the guards make their way over here so that guy just stands right there, so it's real easy to pick him up. The only thing you have to worry about is that he is under those spotlights. And there is a guard behind the gate that walks back and forth. So you you don't want him to see you, but as soon as you knock him out, you want to put him, you know, as far in that corner as you can because you don't want the other guards finding him, obviously. Because the dogs will make their way over here and they will follow this path. And the dogs and the guards do come next to this fountain. Uh, luckily for you, though, it is completely dark underneath this fountain. And there's that guard patrolling right there. So you can just sit in this fountain, and the dogs will eventually lose their scent uh, on you. What's even luckier is that dogs do not uh, get the scent of guards that have been downed. So uh, as long as you put that guy far enough into that corner over there, when the dogs and the or, uh, when the guards walk by, they won't see the body, so you'll be safe uh, from that. Now, you usually want to stay on the opposite side of the fountain that the dogs are on, because if you stay in the middle, the dogs do catch onto your scent, and they know you are in the fountain, and they will stand there and bark at you. So you want to keep the largest amount of distance that you can from those dogs while staying in the fountain. Uh, normally, the second guard and his dog also come check on things back here, but it looks like they're not doing it this time. Oh, and one thing I need to mention is that your thermal goggles can see through these hedges. It's not entirely too useful right now, but it's something you can do. Lost 
So I actually think I made that dog uh, notice me when I went close to the middle there, and that's why they stayed for a little bit longer than I wanted them to. But as soon as they leave, you are clear to uh, use this store code, which is 2126. You would have learned that from reading the data stick that you got from the satchel. And as soon as you open it, you can... Uh, if you're not... If you... You know... Uh, I probably cut it a little too close running through it as quickly as I did. So, you know, you might want to wait for that guard to turn his back to you again, but... Yeah. I like to try to be quick in these videos. Try to pretend that I'm actually good at this game. Because, uh, you know, honestly, uh, Splinter Cell for me has always been like a... Uh, a, uh, uh, how do I say this, like a, uh... Dang it, how am I trying to, uh, to say this? It's usually been like a, uh, uh... Just, uh, practice once, fail it, and just keep practicing until I finally, uh, get it right. I'm just having a hard time trying to concentrate and, and remember the, the word that I'm trying to remember. I seem to do that a lot. I seem to always forget like the most obvious words that I'm trying to trying to remember. But um, in this room, there are a lot of lasers, and you need to be careful of that. Uh, right there, you can go past those double doors, and there is a disposable pick in there. Uh, depending on how good you are at using the lock picks, you might want to get disposable picks because. Uh, out of the, the... There's only a few locked doors, but they all have to... Uh, you, you have to unlock all of the tumblers. So they can take a little while to unlock. But here there's uh, lasers in between all of these pillars, and we have to go through those double doors right there. Now there's the four lasers on each side, but after these four guys have come out of the door, uh, the lasers in, uh, in front of the door have disappeared so that is where you can make your chance to move across so uh, I believe the two guards kind of walk around this room and the other two guards have gone through the room that we were just in so as soon as these guys walk past you 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 can uh, move right past them so yeah there were lasers uh, right there but they open up after after these guys walk through the door Now, these ones are a little harder to see, but if you use your thermals, there are lasers right there at the bottom of the stairs. So, you want to just jump onto this ledge using the uh, wall jump, or wall kick. And then, there are lasers at the top of the stairs right there, so you just jump over the railing. Those aren't palace guards. Some kind of special forces. Georgian elite. Probably Kristavi's men, which would suggest Nikolaj's is local. Does that affect my game? No. Find those interrogation files. And Kristavi's men aren't going to be much friendlier than oh, Nikolaj's. Crap. You're authorized for lethal force. But yeah, what I was talking about earlier, I meant to say trial and error. <laughs> yeah, I actually had to pause at that checkpoint screen and think about it, but yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Most of the time when I play Splinter Cell, it's usually a trial and error, so... Yeah, and for this playthrough, there is definitely a lot of error going on. But right here, uh, it might seem pretty daunting, but all you need to do is just shoot out those two lights. Those are the only two lights you need to shoot out in this whole room. Now, those guys, those Special Forces guys, one thing to know about them is that they are wearing some protective headgear, a uh, headgear, so... Oh, and also bulletproof vests, so if you want to shoot them and do damage to them, you have to hit them in the uncovered areas like legs, arms, or straight in the face. Uh, but once they start walking in the opposite direction, you can move past them. And just follow this guy all the way until you get under the stairs here. And then this is where you want to wait for him to walk past you again. I helped too. 
They had a different interrogator, a different team for each subject. Your subject was one of Nikoladze's colonels too? Yes. What did they ask him? About something called the Ark. I couldn't make sense of it. Kristavi doesn't want anybody to know everything about it. Except himself. He obsesses over it. Sits up there on the fourth floor, just watching the files over and over again. Jesus, I would never want to see those things again. The things we did for that information. But there's just three rooms, or uh, three floors uh, in this room. Uh, there's a lot of doors, but the only door you can actually go through is the one up there. There is uh, one guard up there, one guard on this level that I'm on, and then there's two guards uh, on the floor below. Uh, that is a keypad lock door, and the guy at the very top contains the data stick for it, so we'll have to knock him out uh, in order to get that. Uh, but yeah, right here, all you need to do is just kind of sit right here and that guy will kind of look at you as if he almost sees something, but nah, there's nothing over here. Don't worry about it, just keep moving. Keep moving, buddy. But, once again, once these guys start moving, you can follow this guy and take him out. Luckily for you, he kind of keeps his back towards you the whole time, so it's real easy to sneak up on him. But you can grab that satchel that has the data stick that has the code for this keypad, which is 70021. Now this light switch right here, it turns off all of these lamp posts in the entire room, but it does not turn off the chandelier. And before you go through this door, you're going to want to use your cables because there are a few guards and you want to make sure that you're not walking through this door when they're staring right at you. And the game is actually being pretty nice right here because, you know, these past couple of doors we needed uh, Kikos that we could only get from knocking people out and, man, those areas would have been a pretty big, big headache to try to get past without knocking people out. So, it's actually pretty, uh, pretty nice that uh, we needed these uh, satchels on these guys because it made things quite a bit easier. Uh, but as soon as you get through here, you have a checkpoint. But, as always, in uh, at least the older Splinter Cell fashion, you need to hide bodies. So, when you go through the door, you want to make sure you grab this guy and lead him in here into the darkness. Now, there are two guys that guard this large hallway, and then those two guys to the left and right that guard those small hallways right there. Uh, but before you move forward, you want to come all the way down these stairs and grab a med kit. Uh, med kits are very important in this level, and if any of the last levels are any indication, there are quite a few gunfights, so you will need as many med kits as you can get, because they will be very important. Uh, these gunfights are very difficult. You know, it's not almost necessarily that the gunfights are difficult, it's just that... Um, this game wasn't really designed for gunfights, so that's what makes it difficult, is that the game wasn't really designed as a third-person shooter. Uh, but right here... Yeah, I'm gonna wait for those two guys to make their way back, so I'm going to cut until they do that. Now, here we are. They just came and they turned around. Now, it's very important that you follow directly behind them. Uh, you can't hide anywhere when they're walking by. Even if you're in darkness, you'll be close enough to where they see you. So you need to wait for them to be on their trip all the way on the other end so that you can follow behind them. So they both just uh, patrol this long hallway here. This guy stops right at this hallway to peek down it real quick. So. Uh, once, uh, once you get in here, you just need to uh, sit and wait for him to walk by. He'll take a look, but he won't see anything, and he'll continue on. And as soon as he leaves, you can pull out your gun and shoot out this light. Now, if you remember, that camera uh, has a metal casing over it, so it cannot be shot out. So we'll just shoot out the light. 
and we can run right past it easily. I believe this was a locked door. Yes, it was. So yeah, like I was saying earlier, uh, there are a couple of locked doors and you have to pick all of the tumblers in order to open the doors. So that is why disposable picks can be pretty handy in this level. And in here we have more lasers. So you just need to stay crouched, wait for those to disappear, and then run across. And then these, it's only the two in the middle that disappear, so you have to jump over it. But as soon as you get in here... Um... I meant to shoot out that light, but technically you can... You just need to do a distraction. Because if you don't, when this guy walks in here, the first thing he does is turn on the light. And this place has a lot of lights, and so... I hate this kind of thing. What do you have? Interrogation, torture, and... Oh, Christ! What? The Ark is a satellite. What? A special atomic demolition munition. You mean a nuclear suitcase bomb? Yeah. I'll get back to you. So, must have been nothing. you want to be pretty quick because you uh, don't want them turning on those lights. The Ark is the mission, Fisher. Get it. It's in a safe inside a vault in the library, locked by scanner to Nikolaids' retina. So I'm going to need Nikolaids alive to get the Ark. That's right. But for whatever reason, after you do a distraction, this guy never turns on the lights. So yeah, that's all you need to do. Just do something to distract them, and you don't have to worry about the lights. But as soon as you grab that data stick, or use that computer, there will be a third guy that comes out of the doors all the way down there. You also need to uh, be careful about these guys here, because they are still patrolling the area. But yeah, after this guy comes through that door, that is what opens up the rest of uh, that's what opens up those doors right there so you can actually go past them now I have no idea what caused these two guys to uh, mess up their pattern they're usually supposed to be walking side by side so I don't know what happened there but once again just wait for them to move and then you can move past them then there's another camera here that cannot be shot out, but it's no big deal because you can just run past it. And then go through the door. And so that will wrap it up for this video. And in the next episode, we will find Nikolods. I'll see you guys then.